today's the day. Today's the day that I go so much further than I've ever been before. 70 miles I'm going to try and do today and I'm just going to try and take all day to do it. The problem I had with yesterday was that I, I looked at the Garmin when I got back and my actual cycling time was like 2 hours 50 minutes to do 45 miles. It's so important to pace yourself and today I'm going to really have to pace myself so I should just treat today like a nice jolly ride and make sure that I'm really taking my time every hour that I hit make sure that I've not gone too far and if I've gone too far in that hour then slow down, conserve my energy. Also I forgot to say yesterday when I was going through Helmsley a lot of people kind of beeped me and waved me and I can only think that it's this, that, that that's the reason that they were waving at me. So if there's someone in Helmsley who is cycling for Diabetes UK that they usually see and that's why they were beeping at me, please get in touch if you're watching this, if you're a Diabetes UK cyclist in Helmsley and thanks for your support. And there was a couple of other times where people beeped me on the road between places and I really don't think it was because of my bad cycling. Um, I think, you know, they were waving and I think it was probably because of the, the jersey and it, it really hits home that, uh, you know, what what we're doing on this bike ride, what the 30th of us will be doing is really important, you know, and it, and it really does affect a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds and, and different areas throughout the UK. I've brought some extra rations today, um, brought lots of raisins and nuts again. What else have I got? Oh, the most important thing, I've got Seuss's keychain on the back of my bike. Thank you so much, Seuss, that's so kind of you. Hopefully that'll make me survive the 70 miles. Very nervous and very shaky, but I think I'm just gonna go and have a relaxing ride and see how far I can get and make sure that, you know, I just get home at the end of the day. Right, uh, first little leg, I'm going to Ampleforth, uh, which is about 27 miles away, so it's a long way there, but I'm gonna have lunch after this first leg, seeing as it's 11.30, so let's get on with it. Uh, I'll get to Ampleforth and I'll see you there. Bye. My brakes aren't going to work. Let me tell you, it's 17% up the other side. Oh, come on. Clearly where Kellogg's is made. Up on that hill, miles over there. You probably can't see it, but it's called Ampleforth College. I used to play rugby against on these rugby pitches here. Amazing, it's like a, like a 15 year old boy I was playing rugby here in the pouring rain. And now I'm cycling past it. stopped for lunch. I had the most ridiculously luxurious cycling lunch ever. Check it out. And the first leg, I have to say, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident. Still got Seuss's Eiffel Tower here. I'm gonna, gonna get to the next stop at Sheriff Hutton, which is in about 22, 23 miles, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll see you in Sheriff, Sheriff, Sheriff Hutton. And, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see more of this beautiful countryside around here because it is just gorgeous. That's not beautiful and it's making a quite irritating noise. Ta-da! Beautiful countryside, all of that. I'm heading down there now. I'm heading down there and up the other side. So, wish me luck. See you in Sheriff Hutton. Bye! I have to say, the bum is very sore after lunch. It's these Yorkshire roads, you know. Get some bloody tarmac on them. It's like the gods heard me. There's like a perfectly tarmac road. Oh, wait a minute. It's just changed the road. There was like a 200 meter stretch of perfect new tarmac just around one corner back there. Now, back to the 
bumpy old one. Oh, wait, here we go again. Look. What is this? The road just changed again. I'm on like racetrack quality tarmac in the middle of nowhere. It's going to change back again at any second. I know it is. Oh, wait. Now I've got potholes. Look at him, filled with mud. Just done the first few miles after lunch. And I'm feeling very weak. And I was wondering why. And that's why, look back there. That's Ample Force and Ample Force College on the other side of the valley. I've just climbed up the other side of it. It's weird how deceptive it is. It felt like I was on flat, just looking at the road. And then suddenly you look back like this and you go, oh yeah, yeah, I'm way above where I was a couple of miles ago. So, um, that was not good. Straight after lunch out of Ampleforth, there were the largest hills. They're clearly on the elevation charts I've checked just now, and I don't know why I didn't prepare for them or get ready for them, but I, I don't know what it was. Maybe I set off too soon after eating, but within five miles of leaving lunch, I was shaking, uh, really shaking. I remember like as a kid if I was doing a lot a lot of exercise and stuff um, people who were leading the sports and stuff would say bandy around the term low blood sugar and I it just got me thinking for the next sort of 10 miles through that leg I was just shaking and shaking and felt so wobbly and dizzy and I, I just it was like tripping <laughs> just horrible and if that is anything like what diabetics have to experience having hypos I, I I just like it must be horrible it must be horrible for Ellie when she says she's hypo you know for me it's just she's pricking her finger and, and testing blood and a number comes up and she says oh she's hypo and I guess you don't really realize how it feels you know to be hypo and I probably wasn't even the level that diabetics get to. You know, my pancreas doesn't kick in and stops pumping insulin around my body when I'm too low. And, you know, I, I'm sure a normal person doesn't ever get as low or as high as a diabetic. Half an hour ago when I got here, I really wasn't up for this last leg. Now I've got a bit more sugar into me and taken on some water again. Um, I, think I'm, I think I'm ready to do the next 20 miles. The feeling of accomplishment though, just getting this far is amazing and you know the, the ride to Paris is just going to be like 10 times the, the feeling of you know accomplishment so yeah um, I'm going to get on with it and I'll, I'll check back in with you when I get home. See you at home, bye! Okay so um, I'm feeling quite emotional. Um, I know this sounds really dramatic and um, I mean all I've done is go on a bike ride right and you know it's not even as long as I'm going to be doing on like one day on the charity ride but I um, that was that was really hard that was one of the hardest things I think I've ever done and I consider myself Quite, quite physically fit and um, you know this was extremely tough like tougher than it looked like on paper and I'm pretty sure tougher than it would have usually been the last segment um, after I refilled sugar and water for some reason I just got on the bike and the wind just picked up and for the whole last 20 21 miles the last segment was for the whole last 21 miles I just had the wind straight in my face because I was coming back east home and 
like I can't explain it to you. When you when you stop pedaling, usually when you stop pedaling with no wind, the bike carries on going. There's there's very little friction between the, the road tires and the tarmac. The last 20 miles, every time I stopped pedaling, I would literally stop. Like I'd be going like eight, nine miles per hour, which is very slow for this kind of bike, straight into the wind, very, very pedaling hard. And I would stop pedaling immediately. The wind would just send me backwards and I would stop. I, it was so demoralizing and so difficult. Uh, and it it just felt like it was never going to end. And about eight miles ago, so about, I don't know, 14 miles into the last segment, there was this climb which went from about 50 foot to 700 foot, which I know, you know, for some Yorkshire cyclists, that's probably tiny, you know, and I'm sure you can, you know, have a lot bigger ascents than that. But it was in the space of like, a few hundred meters the gradient was like 17 percent and it, ju it it just like i don't think there's any climb that, th that is that hard on the london to paris ride which is kind of a bonus for me it's like a plus thing because it, i didn't stop i i went like one mile per hour the whole way up and i had to change from sitting in the saddle getting up out the saddle sitting down but i didn't stop and so that's a plus, I guess, from the last 20 miles, knowing that nothing is gonna be that hard in terms of a climb. Um, and I, I know some cyclists are probably watching this and laughing at me, like, you know, what, 700 foot, really? Because, you know, you can get elevations a lot bigger than that. But I, ju I think, you know, I, it's gonna be so hard explaining to these guys, like, coming back in and being like, yeah, and, you know, obviously, what, what have you done, George? You've been on a 70 mile bike ride, that's it. I, it's not a big deal, it just felt like such a big deal. I've become one of those really dramatic vloggers that you see on the internet who like, make a big deal about a cupcake not being gluten free or something. <laughs> so better watch out, at least gluten free. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. I didn't film anything with the GoPro on the last segment. I just felt so down and beaten by the whole thing and I just spent the whole last leg thinking I'm not going to be able to do this and the other cyclists on this ride are just they're going to be laughing at me thinking that I could have done this with only like two months training beforehand thank you so much Zeus for that I it was lovely to have on the bike thank you very much um, I have to say the thing that kept me going throughout that 70 miles was, and especially in the second leg when you remember I, I was sort of saying like I felt really low blood sugar and wobbly, I was constantly thinking about the other cyclists on my ride who will be doing it with diabetes, because there will be some cyclists who I'm cycling with who will su be suffering from diabetes and I just kept thinking, do you know what George, yeah you aren't finding this nearly as hard as they will and just keep going for them and keep going for everyone else who feels that way every day when they wake up every time that they haven't eaten a meal or you know so thank you all of you diabetics out there you uh you kept me going right let's go inside now I've waffled on way too long hey guys hello you all right yeah do I look exhausted? Yes. Good. Because he's done 70 miles. You're all very worried about you, do you? <laughs> Were you? It's because I was so... Subscribe! I took too long. Can't wait to hear how it went. Anyway, Zach <laughs> wanted to say subscribe. a couple of little things. Go, Go on for then, it, Zach. Zach. <laughs> Support for Diabetes UK! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay you later. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> right, inside well for done, dinner. Yay. Let's go. Come on then. <laughs>